gonna shake your booties for black girl nerds. Mr. Thornton, thank you for your time. I am so honored to talk to you. I enjoy your work so much, particularly on Goliath. And now we are rounding home plate, so to speak, for this final season. When, when we first encountered Billy, he, we know what he was, where he, what his profession, working as an attorney, and he had that shift into searching for redemption. When you look at his journey over these four seasons, what are you most proud of? I think I'm the most proud of uh, the way his evolution was laid out. You know, I mean, I think uh, by the time you get to the fourth season, you see this is a guy who really wants to find out who he is and where he should go. And I love that kind of thing because you know at the end of it that it's still going to be a process because I'm not always happy about things that are tied up in a, ribbon at the end you know what I mean uh, even though this has a wonderful ending it's still you know not like a big speech you know that that ties everything up uh, it's just mainly a look between a father and, and a daughter you know and uh, I uh, I think that they they rolled it out in the proper way you know I mean I think each season grew and um, I'm also proud that we that we stuck to making good stories every year. I mean, the writers really worked hard to make sure each season was different, and uh, yet uh, you had the spirit of everything since season one. You know, they they always. Uh, uh, made sure that we could give a new exciting uh, story, but at the same time, didn't sort of betray the history of it, you know? Mm -hmm. What was most impressive, there's so many shows that are drawing, and of course, important topic, drawing from our, curtain, our current world conditions, but this, your season is focused on a tremendous problem that not enough people are talking about, the opioid crisis in this country, just globally. When you, as you began to shape Billy this season and we're glad he survived or did he survive? I don't know. People got to tune in to see if these are all, you know, flashback dreams or something. But what have you learned about this crisis that you may not have been aware of before? Because it's a huge problem that's not getting enough conversation. Well, the thing about it is, is I was very aware of it already. So as opposed to becoming aware of it and then, you know, getting a bee in my bonnet about it after the fact, um, I already had a bee in my bonnet about it. And uh, I've had friends, you know, uh, fall prey to the opioid crisis and some are not here anymore. So I was already pissed off, <laughs> you know? So there wasn't, uh, I didn't have to act that. Uh, I actually relished every day going in there to take down the big pharmaceutical companies. You know, it was a pleasure for me to do. And uh, this is something that gets swept under the rug a lot of times. And uh, we really got to pay attention to this because, uh, you know, people, well, I mean, it's a strong statement, but I mean, killing people for profit is not good, <laughs> as we know. And uh, whether it's, whether it's uh, uh, you know, second party or not, you know, it's, that's still what it is. And uh, we got to bring more attention to this. But, you know, people sometimes are afraid, you know, uh, because corporations more and more are dictating what we do. And uh, we're the little folks, you know? And when I say little folks, I mean, some people like on the internet, well, you're not a little folk, you're, you know, whatever. But what I mean by that is people who <clears throat> don't run these places, the people who are just uh, uh, sort of uh, vulnerable to them, you know? 
And uh, I think it's an important season and it may be polarizing, you know, and if it is, that's okay. Because as long as you shake people up, that's a good thing. Um, Man, I have enjoyed you so much in this show. You are marvelous talented man and i appreciate you for talking to me today thank you so much well thank you so much and i love the name of your show that's amazing thank you thank you we try we try <laughs> thank you so much thanks hi tanya hey, thank you for your at? time how are you excellent how are you doing i'm good i'm good very good if I had more time, I'd ask you, yeah, I like your book collection back there. I'm a bookworm too. And I, oh, I, I see this lot. book back there. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's yeah. looking good. Well, I thank you for your time. You know, we're rounding out to season four of a tremendous show that's tackled so many important issues, specifically uh, about Brittany and how people in the world view, view her, view what she does and just her evolution and contribution to the group. What are you most proud of when you think of from when we first met her until now? Because I feel like she's broken down a lot of stereotypes and things that people have about sex workers, about just a lot of things. It's funny, it's been a really interesting journey for me because like I, I always told myself, oh, I'm like an empathetic open person that like I couldn't care less what you do for a living if you're, if you're like a good human being, you know? But if I really look back, probably my first impressions of her I probably had a lot of judgment or at least a preconceived idea of what I thought uh, like a sex worker would be like which is so crazy because first of all I don't know what I'm talking about secondly I don't know anybody who does this for a living in real life and also where did I get this idea that there's not a human being attached to, to this what it's just a job it's a profession I realized that Brittany, in the writing of Brittany, constantly surprised me every single time. She always was the opposite of what I expected her to be. And that taught me like, wow, I shouldn't, I probably shouldn't have these judgments about people. And just because you do, you're not defined by what you do. You're defined by like who you are as a human being. And she's like a honest, brave, tough, uh, very like good hearted person, you know? And so that to me, yeah, I look back and I'm like, wow, yeah, you definitely don't judge a book by its cover, you know, so I have a lot of like empathy and love for her. And, and yeah, yeah, that taught me a lot. I think a lot of people share that sentiment. It was interesting to see her in the mix of these people. So much of this is steeped in redemption and, and, and change and being better and, and making things whole and right. What would you say was her path? Well, the other characters like Billy are in the midst of all this redemptive these redemptive things, what do you think was the thing that connected her best to all of these people? I mean, I think like, I probably share this quality. Sometimes I have to remind myself not to do this all the time, but like, I think Brittany uh, is the kind of person that makes other people feel good, you know? Mm. So in, in the same way that I think women that do this, they're almost like pseudo like therapists for the, their, their clients, because they feel like, they don't judge, they look at someone with no judgment. So they don't judge your compulsions. They don't judge what you want, what you like, whether you're married or not, or, or, you know, and so I think a lot of, that's why they have such like kind of intense relationships with their clients. Cause they're able to, you could say anything to someone like Brittany. And so I think she's used to being one of those people that makes other people feel good. And she's probably been that way with Billy her entire life. And I think in this season, she's really kind of what she's, how she's grown is that she's finally learned that she can be okay with herself and be herself and not be someone that makes somebody else feel good. And so that's a really good lesson for me personally of like, you don't need to make yourself into something in the eyes of somebody else. You can, you can also be yourself and you know, have solidarity in that too. So it's a good lesson, you know? I love that. And I receive all of that because that's a lesson I could teach myself. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Beautiful. They are giving me the, uh, so thank you for your time. Oh, Wonderful series. I appreciate you and what you brought to it. Thank you again. You have a great name now, Beth. So it's, it's, you have a French last name. Yeah, from Paris, from Louisiana. Oh, so cool. I love it. I'm French. My mom's French. <laughs> oh, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nina, for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Hey, these are some exciting, exciting, exciting times for the people of Goliath in that we're winding it down, 
but the momentum is not stopping. When you look at the evolution of uh, Patty from where she began to where she's now, how would you describe her her journey from when we first meet her till season four? Sure. Um, I think this season in particular, it's actually, it's very exciting. Uh, There is almost a full circle in it. This is a season where we kind of see Patty for the first time owning her talents, owning her abilities, giving herself an opportunity in a bigger firm, in bigger shoes, um, and and kind of an unapologetically giving herself a shot. Mm-hmm. So much of, of the show is steeped in redemption and and fighting and fighting the good fight. Would you what would you say that was her entryway into how we read? We know what it's like with Billy's character, but how would you say her her ultimate her her beginning entry point was into how we got to know her? Sure. Um, I think I think with Patty initially, it was really getting her feet wet in a profession that she really wanted to be respected and be a part of. I think what Billy brought to the table and brought into her life was the human side of it. Um, he brought a real, there was, there were real people and she being compassionate, being empathetic, couldn't ignore it. It wasn't just about ambition anymore. It was about dealing with real people and real consequences uh, on a bigger scale. But I think that really influenced the way she looked at the profession. Mm-hmm. A lot of the season centers around the opioid crisis, and then we see lots of stories of it in, in the media. How has this brought in your own knowledge of exactly what is happening with that, just not even just in our country, but glo- just globally? Yeah, I what kind of really opened my open my eyes. The aha, I mean, it's all over the place, unfortunately. So it's nothing's really that unknown, but the realization I had. I kind of went into this thinking, ah, the greed, you know, the greed, the, how nasty that is. And I left being, you know, it's, it's not just greed. It's actually, it's evil, you know, and that's something that just has to be taken down. And I'm happy that we get to explore such a timely topic that just doesn't seem to go away. And it keeps getting bigger and bigger. And lastly, as we wind down now in the fourth and final season, what are you most proud of when you look back at this journey, how it's changed you as a performer or challenged you or in any way, what are you most proud of? It's like being in a five, six year relationship. I think in and of itself, that's an accomplishment. Uh, And for me personally, I'm really, I'm really proud of Patty. I really like her. You know, I think she's really fun. Um, and I'm just, I, I'm just really proud of the time I got to spend with her. I learned a lot from her. I hope she brought some joy. I hope she got people to think occasionally. Um, and it's just been a real honor to, to be with her for the past couple of years. It's been an honor to see you bring her to life. It was just a wonderful journey. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy this, this season with your cats. It's been great to see it. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jenna, for your time. I love your artwork behind you. That's oh, cool. thank you. Yeah, a little, a little divine feminine energy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Always need that. Yes. With, with uh, Samantha, you know, so much of this series, so much of Goliath is steeped in redemptive stories, fighting the big guy, fighting the big fight. But Samantha has another sort of entryway into the lives of all these people we've gotten to know over the past three years. How was her entry point different from the characters that we already know? Um, that's an interesting question. Yeah. I mean, probably there's two points of entry that are different is that, you know, she's sort of coming from, I think because her law firm, um, is crumbling in front of her eyes. Um, but really the law firm is just the language of love that was, was sort of taught to her by her father. Right. So it's really about her feeling, how, how does she feel safe, seen and loved? And it's really been built all around this law firm of, of responsibility and saving face and um, success. 
which is very much how she probably received love from her father. So that's, it's, it's, it's not about what's doing what's right. It's almost about what's doing what's best, which is a little bit of a veer off the road. And it's just that much of a veer that makes things become a little bit questionable. Right. Um, and then also, you know, what's interesting about this season is that now the sort of socio-ecological um, economical thing that we're dealing with is big pharma, right? So the Goliath has explored different modern crisis um, in different ways. And this is now our pharmaceutical industrial complex, which you can't really fully wrap your brain around without humanizing it, right? Understanding mm -hmm. like, how every human is affected by pain whether personally or through someone that they love. And I think it's really wonderful um, that the writers and the creators of the show decided to make everyone having their own pain journey. And I think that Sam's pain journey through chronic pain and this medical condition that can be really extremely debilitating is, is an important way in, you know. Mm -hmm. What's always been intriguing about the show to me is the stereotype of lawyers and people in that line of work is they're unfeeling and they're kind of cold and clinical and, mm -hmm. you know, logical, but so much of, like you just mentioned is exploring pain and the love language of passing this firm from, from father to daughter. What surprised you most in your own preparation for Samantha that, uh, about the layers of her personality of what lawyers are, how she's portrayed, what was most intriguing about that to you? Well, lawyer, I mean, the whole legal system I find fascinating. You know, animals don't have a legal system, right? It's a complete fictive that we humans have just completely made up, right? And then believed to be true. It's, it's sort of an, an incredible system of fiction um, that's based on personal belief. Um, so I, I find it like storytelling, like magic, like it's, it's super fascinating. But maybe for me, the most fascinating and then also the most the, the, the biggest challenge was sort of how do you enter into this giant world of like so many things and there's so much um, tension and stress and movement and, you know, lawyers, it's very fast paced. And then how do you enter in that in a body that's um, precarious, right? How do you mm. enter into that in a body that's um, in a societal way perceived broken, right? Or, or, you know, uh, different. Um, so that was the, I couldn't just enter it like, I'm a thoroughbred, I'm a lawyer, like, let's do this. I had to enter it through a different pain body. And that changed everything for me, where it's like, no, she's not going to litigate like this. She's going to sit down. <laughs> like, I'm not standing up on the thing. Like, I'm going to find different ways to be authentic to her physical journey um, instead of trying to get caught up in the sort of like high stakes legal thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you, Jenna. Thank you so much for your time. Super looking forward to season four. It's been a fabulous ride. And thank you again. Yeah, thanks so much. Have a great day. Take care. Hi, Brandon. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thank you again. This is a pretty epic uh, series to be entering and especially entering at this point in the story that you do. So much of this uh, show has been steeped in redemption and redempt redempted and fighting the big fight and the bad guy. What would you say is Robert's entry point into those stories? Because it's slightly different than a lot of the other characters. Well, I think that uh, in terms of this story right here, um, Rob is uh, someone who I think has lost his way a bit. Like he went into law with really good intentions and kind of got uh, hypnotized by the prospects of this prestigious law firm in uh and the money and the potential for where uh, that could take him. But, um, uh, but really at the end of the day, I think he was there to help people and um, learns that this might not be the best way to, to help people. Mm -hmm. With, with uh, there's a lot of big, another big topic that's being tackled this season. As you reflect on your preparation for this, what insights have you learned about yourself, about the subject you're going to tackle this season, or it just new information that came to you that informed how you would build Robert and who he is? 
Uh, well, I learned a lot about law. I mean, I, you know, I think that, uh, it's like you have an idea of what the law is and how that works. And then just uh, going into the nuances of it, it's just it's complicated. I mean, um, it's, it's sometimes it's so simple, but sometimes it's so complex. So that was exciting to learn about. Um, I was already interested in what was going on with the opioid industry, um, uh, but good doing more research and reading some books going into detail about the strategies behind uh how these communities were just targeted and decimated was uh just unsettling um so uh i i think that um it's it's really interesting that um you know we're dealing with this another public health crisis right now but these public health crises crises have been going on for so long and and it's easy to kind of forget about them and just to move on so i hope that a show like this will get people curious about um it and um all the other vulnerable communities that are just just affected out there that we just you know forget about don't talk about and um yeah that would be my hope Yes, absolutely. Why, well, thank you. Fabulous series. Um, season four is going to be a big one, and I can't wait to see uh, the responses to it. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thanks for having me. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.